Well, joining me now from Dublin is Rebecca Moynihan. She's a Labour Dublin City Councillor and campaigning for Together for Yes. And in London, we have Anne Scanlon, a pro-life campaigner for London Irish United for Life. And again in Dublin, Patsy McGarry. He's a religious affairs correspondent with the Irish Times. I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Anne, if I could begin with you first. So this Eighth Amendment could be repealed in the referendum. Why are you against it being repealed in a nutshell? Uh, because I've lived here my whole adult life and I've seen what an abortion culture does to a country. Uh, we abort one in five babies. Um, nine out of ten children with Down syndrome are aborted and even children with things like minor abnormalities or things like a cleft lip or club foot are now aborted. What was once promoted as a choice is now promoted as the solution to a problem in pregnancy. And I think actually by offering women abortion rather than help and support or actually letting them down. Okay, so Rebecca, abortion culture, as Anne puts it, sounds like a very terrible thing. Do you find any validity to that argument? Absolutely, it does sound like a terrible thing. Um, but we put the Eighth Amendment into the Constitution in 1983. And what the Eighth Amendment does, it equates the life of the unborn as being equal to the right to life of the mother. And over the last number of years since that's happened, 1992, we had the X case where um, we stopped a 13-year-old girl at the airport um, who was due to travel because under the Eighth Amendment it was decided she wasn't travelling. We we, she wasn't allowed to travel and the Attorney General felt he had an obligation to stop her. We then voted for the right to travel and information. But since then we've had very, very many tragic cases. In 2013 we had the very sad death of Savita Halapanavar who was miscarrying a very much wanted baby at 17 weeks. She asked for an abortion. She wasn't given one. She was left. There was medical mismanagement involved. She developed sepsis and died. And if she was given an abortion at that stage to a baby that was already miscarrying, um, Savita Halapanavar would be alive. She would probably be living with some more children in Galway. We wouldn't know her name. And every couple of years, we have these hard, difficult cases that come up. Right. And they come up in Ireland because of the presence for the Eighth Amendment. And doctors who are dealing with fetal and maternal health will all say that they cannot offer um, those hard, difficult cases cases where people are diagnosed with pre pregnancies that will not survive outside the womb, they have to um, tell them good luck and they go and travel to England. Okay. They can't even pass okay. over their medical okay. records. You, you made a bunch of points there, Rebecca. So, because okay. of the presence of the okay. Eighth Amendment. Okay, fair enough. And you sort of set out your stall there. Patsy, I'm not discriminating against you because of gender here. I'm going to bring you in in a moment or two, but I want Anne's response to this because one of the issues here, Anne, is that yeah. women are having abortions. They're doing it anyway. They're taking these, yeah. I don't know, abortion pills, they're traveling, they're, they're um, putting themselves in vulnerable situations, which makes it far worse. This is the reality. Yeah. Women are having abortions, whether you like it or yeah. not. Yeah, they are. And I can tell you that there was about uh, just over 3,000 women came from Ireland here last year. The number of our women traveling from Ireland has been going down year on year. And um, in fact, interesting enough, 121 of the women who came over were actually British women. Um, that's going down. Um, I, I would like to take up the point about Savita because we hear about this case again and again. There's been three independent reviews into her death, which clearly states that it was nothing got to do with abortion. In fact, I would suggest that the Eighth Amendment has made Ireland one and of the, the safest places leading the world obstetrician a, said a, that he, she would be alive I, if she was offered he, an abortion. One man, Peter Boylan, and, and ten has called voices yes against vote. him. I don't... The lead, the, I sorry, don't... No, the leading obstetrician... No, the, inter, the international can obstetrician... Can we just take it? Can I come back? for yes vote I've this been week. Asked about conducted the review... Who conducted the review into the Svita Halapan of our case, calling for a yes vote, and said she would be alive if she had been given have you, um, a termination have you pregnancy read, at the stage that she asked for. Have you read the report? And it, it is, it is, it is complete lies. We can't it is complete keep, lies on the no side. It's complete lies on the no side. Oh it is complete lies. This is a sort of... No, it's not. Can what I get you're my word in? is misinformation. The, the leading obstetrician no. who conducted okay. the review into her case is calling for a yes vote okay. and said that she would still be alive. Okay, you made your point, Rebecca. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's nonsense. As I say, what Ireland is one of the safest places in the world to have a baby. We've had such an amount of misinformation and really quite a lot of aggressive behaviour from the yes side. Okay. I think Ireland should be proud, the uh, proud of the fact that we respect human life. Let me bring Patsy McGarry in then. Patsy, 
Ireland has one of the strictest abortion laws in Europe via what happened in 1983 with the Eighth Amendment. That was 35 years ago, 67% voted to ban abortion, basically, in that referendum. Times have changed, 35 years on. This strict abortion law, is it ultimately out of sync with what the people want right now? Are we, are we going to be able to know clearly by the end of Friday? We should. Um, uh, th this, this is the sixth abortion referendum in Ireland since 1983, including 1983. The wording of that uh, amendment was always a matter of contention, even when it was introduced at the, the first time. I mean, and in 1992, the, the Supreme Court exposed its inadequacies when that 14-year-old uh, girl became pregnant and uh, was prevented from going to the UK for an abortion. There had to be a hearing at the Supreme Court to allow her to travel to the UK for an abortion. In 1992, there were three abortion referendums, one to do with the right to travel for women who wish to get an abortion abroad, two, that they would be allowed to get information uh, on the, those abortion facilities abroad, and three was an attempt to rule out suicide as grounds for an abortion for a girl who went abroad. The people approved travel, they approved information, but they did not uh, rule out a, a, a suicide or threat to mental health as grounds for an abortion for girls who went abroad. And I know it sounds ridiculous that they were trying to restrict girls from going abroad to have an abortion for mental health reasons. And indeed, in 2002, there was another attempt to have that rolled back, and the people said no. So it remains, I mean, for girls who wish to go abroad for an abortion, they may do so if their uh, our mental health is at risk. It is an issue that has f uh, deeply divided this country, and the conversation you heard earlier is right. a typical example of what we have to deal with in Ireland when this issue arises, this, uh, this, uh, these allegations of misinformation, the allegations of um, reinterpretation, if you like, of one particular case, the Zavita case, uh, as an instance, uh, where the yes side uh, take one view and say that uh, there, she was told that she couldn't have an abortion because of the Eighth Amendment, which is true, and then the no side saying that the experts differed on the matter, uh, that she died from sepsis, not because uh, she couldn't get an abortion, which is also true. So it's a deeply, deeply divisive right. issue, and hopefully this time it'll be resolved one way or the other. And why not some sort of compromise? I mean, if it is repealed, if there can be some sort of consensus on when, I don't know, life begins, when a child becomes a child, right? They're not talking about, I, I, they're I, not talking I, about abortions yeah. at 40 weeks or 30 weeks and so on and so forth, right? So it's early well, they, stages. In fact, they're talking about... Right. Can, can I, it be regulated? Actually, can they, it be regulated the, in your eyes? I don't believe so, because we haven't managed to achieve that here. I mean, they're talking about abortion on demand up to 12 weeks, abortion on request to 24, and abortion to birth if the child has a, has a life-limiting illness. I would say that in Britain, 50 years true. ago, we made that mistake. But we have, the, ad, we have the advantage of ultrasound imaging today. We don't need a discussion about when your human life begins. We know. The only question is when we believe that that life has value. We know that the unborn child's heart is beating on day 21, and the brain rate can be detected and measured by day 40. We know those things. All we have to do is look at an ultrasound image. So I just think we should be respecting the right to life, the equal right to the mother. Nobody would suggest that a woman should have to give up her life for a child, not at all. But actually, because Ireland has such a respect for human life, actually, I think women are treated far better in Ireland than they are okay. here. So Rebecca, and what I would okay. like to see is more help and support. Okay, let's, let's bring Rebecca. Rebecca, the heart's beating from a very early moment moment, basically very soon after conception, that's a life. Abortion is killing that life, according to Anne and many other Irish people. Your response to that is what? Um, Anne said a couple of things that were completely wrong there. She said there's going to be abortion um, on request up until 24 weeks and then up to birth. That's not what's in the general scheme. And remember, this is to take the Eighth Amendment out of the Constitution, which, so which guides this what is laws head the for, can pass. Head for what it's essentially and head saying is that the Iraqis state that. Sorry, Anne. Sorry, Anne. Can I finish my Can I finish my point there? It is. 12 weeks, the Oireachtas Committee considered this. We had a Citizens' Assembly that considered, considered this as well. And what came out of both of them was in the difficult cases, such as rape and incest, that there had to be a general ground of 12 weeks. After 12 weeks, there is risk to life and serious risk to harm to health of the woman. Um, and that is up to viability, where, uh, where, where a pregnancy has not reached viability. There will not be a, a 
abortions performed up to birth up to 24 weeks and it is risk to life and serious risk to harm and health. It has to be signed off by two specialists, one of which is an obstetrician um, and there's a 72, even in the 12 weeks there's a 72 hour cooling off period. It is completely different to the 67 Act in Britain. Completely different and the bar is completely different to the 67 Act that's that's there in Britain. So that's misinformation you, you about don't what see the what's legislation and the general 24 scheme weeks here. But this, Last but this year is, we did a But this is, this, this is, th sorry, Anne, can you please stop talking over me when I'm, ha when I'm trying to explain and put forward my point of view? Thank you very much. What has been agreed here, the Eighth Amendment has failed as a legal experiment. If people like Anne want to have a restrictive abortion regime. It also doesn't have to be in the Constitution like the Eighth Amendment. And I do completely take issue with the, the, with the issue that Irish women are safe and they're looked after within the Irish maternal system. That's not true. The Eighth Amendment doesn't just affect abortion, but it actually affects every aspect of care that a woman gets within the Irish medical and maternity right. system. Okay. We have a situation where abortion is a reality. Women are taking abortion pills at home, alone, unsupervised. Take the situation where you might have a woman that has an ectopic pregnancy. She's not getting a pre-scan. She thinks that the um, abortion pill has worked. Next thing, the, the, the um, fallopian tube ruptures. She goes in at a much later stage into hospital than when she needs help. Right. The, the Eighth Amendment puts women in danger. Okay. Abortion Look, is happening in Ireland. Rebecca. Women are travelling. Women are ordering over the internet. We have to make it as safe for women's health as possible. Okay, let's get a response from Anne again before I go to Patsy. And I want to bring up religion here because religion is very important to the Irish people. Catholicism at the heart of all of this. And let me ask you very directly then, how much of an influence is Catholicism on your anti-abortion stance? Because it is for many, I many Irish it. people. I, I did grow up in a Catholic country, and I am indeed a Catholic, uh, but it has, uh, does not form my views. It will have obviously influenced my views. I, I believe this is one of the greatest human rights issues of our time, and I truly believe that if 50 years ago we had ultrasound imaging, no country would have legalised abortion. We would have recognised the baby as a human being. This won't be the first time in history where certain segments of our society were classed as less than people, and I think it's a very, very dangerous road to go down okay. to start saying some people are worthy to live and some people are not. Okay, and you see it as a human rights issue. Many others see it as a women's rights issue and a human rights issue at, at that. Patsy, let me talk about Catholicism for the moment here. Uh, this is from your reporting, a quote from the Archbishop of Armagh, Eamon Martin, said in a statement, the innate dignity of every human life is a value for the whole of society, for people of all faiths and none. It is rooted in reason as well as in faith. To take away an innocent, innocent human life can never be simply a matter of personal choice. And he asked voters to think of two lives. Is the church trying to guilt trip devout Catholics into not repealing the Eighth Amendment? I don't know if that phrase guilt trip is fair, but certainly they're trying to encourage uh, Catholics, uh, practicing Catholics to vote no in the referendum tomorrow. Um, they've had an unusually sustained campaign this time, for instance, in comparison with the same sex referendum uh, three years ago where they essentially issued a statement and took a much more softer line when it came to campaigning on the matter, even though they don't agree with same-sex marriage. In this instance, what you have had was an initial statement from the bishops at their spring meeting in March, and we've had staggered statements by individual bishops at weekends right up to and including the recent weekend and indeed this week as well. But it should be pointed out that the Catholic bishops are not alone on this occasion. The Protestant churches which opposed the 1983 amendment being inserted into the Constitution on this occasion are asking people to vote no as well because they're concerned about the 12-week provision. Basically that there would be, uh, per, uh, abortion will be permitted for the first 12 weeks under proposed legislation. They have grave ethical difficulties with that. So in a sense all churches in Ireland are on the one side on this occasion and all are called, calling for a no vote tomorrow. Right. So Rebecca, all the churches, not just the overwhelming majority of the Catholics but the Protestant churches as well, those who say being Irish and being religious means not only are we not happy perhaps with what happened in 2015 with the same-sex marriage vote, but also now this is an issue that deeply affects our faith and we don't want it to go ahead. Your response to them is what? And 
That's absolutely fine. Um, I think any individual and any church can take a position um, on abortion. I think it's a very contentious, ethical um, and moral issue. And I have no problem um, with people who decide for their very, very deep faith reasons um, that they can't vote yes. Um, but I do ask when people are going to the ballot box that they think about the reality of the situation that's happening in Ireland, the reality of the situation for women in Ireland. And I, I, I do think that there shows, and I think this campaign has shown, that there is a, a big push and a move for change. I don't think when most people go into the ballot po box, they will be thinking about it for, for legal reasons. I think they'll be coming at it from a different perspective. But I obviously have no problem with the, churches t the church taking a stance on this. They're like every other part of civic society who have the right to take their own kind of moral um, stance on an issue. And I've, I've no problem with that. But again, I would say even if you're not in favour of abortion um, it doesn't have to be a constitutional imperative okay. which limits the laws that can change. There's plenty of countries that have restrictive abortion regimes that do it through legislation. The problem is that we cannot do anything for the very difficult cases such as women who have fatal fetal abnormalities because of the line that a woman's right to life is equal to the life of the unborn from the moment of implantation and for me I just don't think that that's the case. And Scanlon, very finally, if this Eighth Amendment is repealed by the voters and come this weekend abortion is now legalised in Ireland, what are you going to do? Uh, carry on doing what we do here. People have been fighting this for 50 years. Um, and I would hope, I mean, it'll take some time, but if, it, if we are, and I have faith in the Irish people, because I think they have deeply, deeply seated, not just religious views, but actually humanitarian views that recognises that an unborn child, a defenceless child, is worthy of protection. And I believe if we wanted to protect women, we wouldn't be offering them abortion as a solution to their problems. We'd be trying to find out what is driving them there to need to have an abortion and help and support them so they didn't feel the need to do that. Rebecca Moynihan, Anne Scanlon and Patsy McGarry, I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.